The Supreme Court has affirmed the victory of Governor Peter Amba of Enugu State in a March governorship election. The APS Court resolved all the issues in favor of Governor Amba. The Supreme Court upheld the judgment of the Court of Appeal, which affirmed the election of Governor Peter Amba as the duly elected governor of Enugu State. A five-member panel led by Justice Mohamed Garuba held that the Labour Party and its candidate failed to prove the allegations of substantial non-compliance with electoral law. The court also dismisses the allegation of NYSC certificate forgery on one of the bases for which the Labour Party governorship candidate wanted the court to disqualify Governor Peter Mba. On his part, Governor Mba, in response to the judgment, says the victory has spurred him to commit more to transforming the fortunes of the state. It's a decision that is consistent with previous decisions of the court on the issues that were calibrated before the Supreme Court. The only area that is new is with regards to Section 137 of the Electoral Act, in which the Supreme Court today has reaffirmed that that novel provision in our electoral law does not take away the responsibility of a petitioner to still prove his case by oral and documentary evidence. So uh, to that extent, uh, I think that this certainty in the law is helpful both to the bench and to the bar. And we can now advise clients with some degree of certitude that given a certain set of facts, this is likely to be the outcome. What well, he say on his part, Governor Mba says this particular victory will spur him to commit more to the fortunes of the state. We wish to express our profound gratitude to the learned justices for affirming the will of justice and for all keeping that will of justice rolling. We specifically thank them for upholding your mandate. This judicial journey has been a huge emotional, physical, and spiritual to the people of Enugu State. First, our case was heard and examined during an exhaustive process at the Enugu State Election Petition Tribunal. And at the end, your mandate was upheld. Uh, smiling, Governor Mbar, right there, so we can now focus on governance. Uh, that's exactly what I guess he's trying to say. Let's move away from Enugu State to the issue of what's going on in River State. Now, just days after the president's intervention in that political impasse that we've been tracking, reactions continue to trail the truce agreement, which some persons have described as lopsided. Those were their words. Some allege that the governor was arm twisted to sign the document. As you can see in a moment, that's the, those are the visual people on the street, residents assuring the governor uh, of their support, and you can take it to the bank. The resident made up of labor unions, students, traders, and other groups hit the streets of Port Harcourt, the capital city, in solidarity with the governor. Members of the Nigerian Labor Congress, the trade union, also mobilized to appreciate the governor for the 100,000 naira Christmas bonus to civil servants amidst other welfare packages. Well, elsewhere in the state, some political leaders have come out to condemn the content of the 
what they now call the Abuja Peace Agreement, which is a eight-point resolution describing it as exercise in futility, judging by its lopsidedness, according to them. Speaking at an enlarged stakeholders meeting of political leaders, chiefs, elders and women groups, as well as youth and other stakeholders from across 12 wards of Ogubolo local government area, the immediate past chief whip of the River State House of Assembly, Mr. Evans BP, says Governor Siminlai of Fubara was coerced into signing the document, which he notes is averse to natural justice and fairness. He also called for the eviction of the embattled lawmakers from the Assembly quarter, saying they are no longer members of the House following their defection to the All Progressives Congress. <laughs> If you are to come in between a batter, what you need to do is to hear from the both parties and advise accordingly. Not for you to give a directive to a particular side. The directive is so one-sided. The directive is so intimidating. The directive is so threatened. In fact, the governor was induced. He signed the document under duress because he was afraid the way and manner he was being threatened, the way he was being reduced before other citizens of uh, rivers, River State, before the Mr. President. So this call for, uh, for this event, this uh, rally, the rally is to tell the Nigerians and even the world, those even the, the, those are diaspora, to tell them we did not take, we are rejecting the directive given by Mr. President, and that now call for this communique, where they pass vote of confidence to the governor, that he's our governor, he's our leader, is the leader of the party PDP. Is also being the leader of the party. Is also leader of the social. We appreciate and respect the, gov the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We appreciate all those people that gather together at Aso Rock. But their offices, with all due respect, are a creation of the law. And that law is the ground norm. That ground norm is the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Whatever thing you do must be within the confines of the constitution. Any decision that you take that is in contravention of the laws of the land is a nullity. To say that a people that have been moved, that voluntarily moved out from the originating party, PDP, to APC, should now be permitted to now come back in breach of a constitutional provision is an aberration. It is a law, it's a directive that is not enforceable because it is, it is a nullity from foundation. Well, um, we keep saying the last has not been heard. It looks like that is true. It's not like a prophecy. But we'll continue to follow through and see how this, how this plays out at the end of the day. But for now, let's bring you other political stories around the country in our political roundup stories. Governor Basi Otu of Cross River State has assured residents of making the state a home for all. Governor Otu was speaking while receiving the Eze in Igbo and members of the Igbo community in Cross River on a custody call in his office in Calabar. He expressed gratitude to the leader of the Igbo people in the state for the overwhelming support the community gave during the last elections and commits to creating an enabling business environment. We want all of us to join hands to build a strong and egalitarian state that wealth will be created and prosperity will be promoted. Kogi State Governor Mr. Yahya Bello has signed into law the 2024 appropriation bill of 258 billion naira. The governor, while signing the appropriation and three other bills in Lokoja, the state capital, noted that the bill tagged budget of consolidation and continuity for inclusive growth will further make the state attain greater height. He appreciated the expeditious passage of the bill by the Assembly, hoping that the incumbent administration will ensure implementation would lead to difficulty. Encourage public-private partnership and other importantly, and more importantly, block all wastages and leakages in our revenues, as well as emphasize the completion of all the ongoing projects and programs. Similarly, in Edo State, Governor Godwin Basaki has signed the 2024 appropriation bill of 342.8 billion naira into law. 
The revised figures show an increment of about 17.5 billion naira from the proposed budget of 325.3 billion, which was earlier sent to the State House of Assembly. Mr. Basaki, who was speaking shortly after the sign-in ceremony at the government house, assured the delegation from the legislature that the money will be utilized judiciously. He also promised that his administration will complete all ongoing projects in the state before leaving office next year. We are going to be able to complete all the projects that we have, priority projects that which we have back to. No government can complete the entire work. The Taraba State House of Assembly has increased the 2024 appropriation bill presented by Governor Agbu Kefers from 311.3 billion naira to 313.3 billion naira with an additional sum of 2 billion naira. The House notes that the inflation of the budget became necessary to meet the yearnings of Taraba residents. The lawmakers also approved the confirmation of Justice Alfred Yakubu to serve as President of the Taraba State Customary Court of Appeal and Justice Joel Agia as the Chief Judge of the State following recommendations of the National Judicial Council. The purpose of this budget, every government has its own styles of leadership, but we believe this present administration has already pet every project to where the funds will be derived from. As reactions continue to trail the eight-point resolution by President Bola Tinubu on the political crisis in River State, some political leaders in the state say the resolution is an exercise in futility as they believe that the peace agreement is lopsided. Speaking at a meeting with political stakeholders from the 12 wards of Ogubolo local government, the immediate positive whip of the River State House of Assembly, Evans BP, says that Governor Simenalai Fubara was coerced into signing the document, which he notes is adverse to natural justice and fairness. We are rejecting the directive given by Mr. President, and that now call for this communique, where they pass vote of confidence to the governor, that he's our governor, he's our leader, he's the leader of the party PDP. Tonight on the program, two states are in focus, given the political situation in those states. First, Benue State. Then, we touch on River State. At the end of the 2023 general elections, one of the states that experienced a major political upset was Benue State, North Central Nigeria, known as the Food Basket. Before the election, it had a PDP governor, three PDP senators, 10 out of the 11 House of Representatives members were all from the PDP, meaning out of the 14 National Assembly members from Benue State, 13 were all from the PDP. At the end of the polls, the representation arguably transposed. The APC won the governorship seat, now Reverend Father Heisen Dalia. APC also won two senatorial seats and 10 House of Rep seats, and, and by implication, uh, the 14 seats. APC occupies 12, leaving PDP with just two in the bicameral chamber, one of which is occupied by the Senate Minority Leader, Senator Abba Moro. Now, unfortunately, after barely seven months, APC, their home is in disarray or divided in Benue State against itself, with loyalties tilting to either the governor, that's I sent Aliyah, or the secretary to the government of the Federation, Senator George Akume. And right now, the national caucus, National Assembly caucus, uh, that's of the APC led by Senator Titus Zam, are criticizing the governor for poor performance, stifling the state of funds, unilateral decisions, arrogance, and are calling on the president to intervene. Well, tonight, that is what we will we'll be focusing on, because they held a no-holds-back uh, press conference yesterday uh, the caucus of the APC from Benue State, uh, led by Senator uh, Zam, and we reached out and he agreed to come on the program, uh, but unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get him to come tonight. Uh, we're still trying to see whether he would join us eventually, but he had promised to join us. I mean, the people, the caucus that spoke yesterday at the press conference. But on the program tonight, joining us from Abuja studio right now, is the Commissioner for Transport and Energy in Benue State, Mr. Omale Omale. Mr. Omale Omale, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. It's my pleasure to always be on your program. Well, as I did tell the audience, uh, we expected Senator Zam to join us, uh, but let's hope that maybe somewhere in between we'll be able to catch up the conversation. But let me begin with you since you're here. Um, how did this Good. thing generate from 
an exciting victory, a major upset in the politics of Benue State, which I just explained that it was like a political transposition. One moment, PDP was in greater majority in the House. Uh, National Assembly was uh, the, the, the governor of the state, and now it's all APC. But APC, the House seemed to be not in order. What is going on in your state as far as you know as a commissioner? Yeah, um, it's one big pleasure to be here today again at a different capacity now as a commissioner for power and transport in Bainway State under the, gov uh, the government of His Excellency Dr. Reverend Father Hysent Yonyam Alia, uh, the executive governor of Bainway State, who have graciously assembled a team of uh, personalities in Bainway State to help manage the NA government that APC is driving in Bainway State. Uh, I think from our own text for the record, um, it will be inappropriate to mention that APC in Bainway State is in, uh, is in disarray. Uh, it is not. Regrettably, uh, there is this um, internal uh, misunderstanding that is largely informed by our inability or inability of some persons to accept uh, reality and the present uh, regime under which the APC is managing the affairs of uh, government in Bainway State. Um, I will also want to put it in perspective that uh, APC in government in Bainway State is not uh, a recent, so 2023 general elections. Uh, some time ago in 1999, a I mean in 2019, APC found her way through uh, the enjoyment of popular mandate again, where the then PDP government of Bainway State was displaced. And then we had, in a manner that we had it then, uh, the immediate past governor, uh, His Excellency Governor Tom, as the governor of Benue State on the APC platform, uh, which was again short-lived by certain uh, tendencies that uh, is in reoccurrence and regrettably finding her way back again in a manner that threatens uh, this fortune that APC currently enjoys in Benue State. Now, having said that, um, <clears throat> the people of Bainway State and the party in Bainway State have not lost steam with this uh, new development and the excitement that uh, APC is now back in government house of Bainway State, providing uh, good governance services in infrastructural area for the benefit of the citizenry or the good people of Bainway State. Uh, the party is high, is in high spirit, is very excited. Uh, only to the extent of certain political players in the APC political fold that have uh, refused to acknowledge the changing in this um, current political leadership with now uh, Reverend Dr. Hyacinth Yonyam Elia as the executive governor of APC and by reason of which the leader of APC in Bainway State with very much acknowledgement of other critical political players of APC political platform <clears throat> in Benway State. And I'm sure it is this misunderstanding that is informing this internal reaction. And I'm very sure as soon as um, everybody come to the realization of this new perspective in leadership, and then we are ready to work together as one indivisible family that symbolizes by uh, the APC um, symbol in Broome, then we'll be better. But nevertheless, I have the assurance of the executive governor of Benue State and in council that all this that is happening within this APC fold will not detract in service delivery and uh, in ensuring that the covenant with which His Excellency the executive governor of Benue State have with the people of Benue State at the time he offered himself in service will not be put down, will not be put down by this tendency that are currently brewing. Mr. Mali, let, let, let me... Uh, let me state two, one or two things and then um, ask my question. Uh, I know that when we have politicians yeah. or political actors like yourself, and we're trying to put the facts before you, sometimes you try to go around it. Uh, the truth is that 75% made, made, made up of two senators, I think about seven House of Reps member, were the ones that converged and held that press conference. And they were very vocal. That's why I use the word no holds bad. They said things straight is some people call it calling out the governor literally literally uh, and that doesn't look like your house is in order i just wanted to put that 
Uh, if 75% of the lawmakers are doing that, I don't know what you want to call that. On the second part is, you mentioned the leadership, who is the leader of the APC in the state. I know that uh, politically a lot of parties say it's the governor that is the leader of the party, perhaps because the SGF played a critical role in uh, bringing in the governor to become a governor and all of that. Why do you think these lawmakers that are protesting, agitating, do not want to accept the governor as the leader of the party, rather they reference the SGF. One had even removed the governor's picture, I think I saw online, removed the governor's picture from his office, but for him, that person or the governor doesn't represent the kind of leader he's going to be proud of. Why do you think they refuse to accept the, the governor as the leader of the party in the state? Yeah, uh, I, I thank you for your thought line, and then... Uh... I would answer promptly by saying that um, uh, it's erroneous not to acknowledge the governor of Bainway State as the leader of APC, or the leader of the government in Bainway State, and by political formation, the leader of the party in Bainway State. Mm. Uh, yes, we are privileged to have our own father, uh, Senator, uh, His Excellency, Senator George Akume, uh, now SGF, as uh, the political um, uh, the chairman of the political uh, stakeholders in Bainway State. You know, these are the formation in party leadership that all of us must resonate with. And if we do that, we will not have any misgiving. Uh, there cannot be two captains at once. That fact must be very well known. And if you have that, it is a tendency for this crisis or the manner of crisis that we are, where we are currently or seemingly experiencing in Bainway State. That's an error. And until this error is put in perspective, it will continue to uh, raise our ugly head and give misgivings to the good people of Nigeria. The situation in Bainway State cannot be different from what we have in other states of the country. APC is one indivisible political party with leadership structure. And this leadership structure must be uh, accepted by all concerned. It is political leadership. It is transient, and everybody must know that. We differ to them in National Assembly as Senator and House of Rep member, respectively, so long as it does last. And as such, a leader, a political leader in their right, in their several constituency, irrespective of any old political protégés or political elite that might exist in their political uh, constituency. So that is a fact. And then... Um, to be uh, an honorable member is not for the want of proper word for description. It is the expectation of the office that we severally occupy. If you are a member of the House of Rep, we address you as honorable member by our conduct, by our action, by our comportment, by our pronouncement. We should be honorable in all facets. So if um, we behave in a manner that does not sustain this appellation, it's too bad. And that is what we are beginning to see. Uh, I do know that the leadership uh, question in Bainway State is not in doubt. That we have our father, the SGF, as the lead, as the, as the chairman of the Elders for Elder Caucus in Bainway State. It's not in doubt. He has made a whole lot of persons in Bainway State. A whole lot of us passed through his hand. No doubt. But today that I am the commissioner and a member of the executive council of the Bainway State government, does not make my father that commissioner for power and transport in Bainway State. It is me, his son, that is. And I, that I must enjoy that uh, reverence as the Honorable the Commissioner for Power and Transport in Bainway State. So, and until all of us come to that realization, it will be an aberration to see any leader of whatever class coming okay. to perform the schedule of the Ministry of Power and Transport in Bainway State. I think that's the error that... Uh, my brothers and friends of the APC extraction at the National Assembly must come to realize and place leadership, respect, okay. decorum, action, and Malik, in perspective so that we avoid this uh, un unnecessary embarrassment. All right, Mr. Mal, let, let's dig deep. Apparently, um, there is a disagreement as to who is the leader of the party amongst um, the APC members at the National Assembly and things are happening in the state. But... Let's zoom into some of the things they raise as concern. We understand that. Please help me confirm. I'm going to ask you two questions in one. The first question, we understand that there was a power-sharing agreement or idea 
I would like you to confirm whether that was that's true. I mean, by the time politicians win elections, they have an understanding of who, what goes to who, sorry, what goes to who and to where. Um, was there an agreement, some sort of an agreement in terms of power sharing? That's question number one. And um, why did the governor, if there was an agreement, let's presume there was an agreement, except you say otherwise, why didn't he follow through? Because they are saying that from the appointment of the chief of staff, Mr. Paul Biam, to the SSG, Professor Joseph Alakali, to the emergence of the speaker, Andona Adagio, as against what they consider the APC zoning uh, of the speakership to Boko East, which should naturally have produced Becky Open, um, they feel that the governor didn't consult them. So let's tackle this particular issue. First, was there an agreement in terms of sharing? And if there was, why did the governor go against it? Uh, uh, I thank you most sincerely for, for that question. But I must also address it squarely to the point that if there is one agreement, I am not party to it. I am not aware. I am not in a position to be party to it and in a position to be aware of if there was one. But I do know that it is APC platform that produced the government, the, the governor, and APC as a political party got <coughs> her manifesto. And as soon as the government is formed, it's a government, as soon as the government is formed, then the government must put together the necessary structure to drive home the manifesto of the party, which is now encapsulated in the blueprint to which the executive governor of Benue State, Reverend Dr. Hai Sention Yamelia, sets to drive for the benefit of the good people of Benue State and Nigeria at large. And let me say this quickly. When we begin to talk about appointments, we should also know appointments that are personal to the office of the governor of a state. When we talk about the, um, the chief of staff, is the chief of staff to the governor. And it's entirely the prerogative of the governor to appoint a chief of staff, whom he verily believe will help him coordinate the other staffs that will be functioning alongside him with him in government to make deliverables on the mandate or the covenant that they share with, the several, with their constituency. And that is it. As far as the uh, appointment of the office of the chief of staff in Benway State is concerned, and that of the SSG, respectively. These are prerogative of Mr. Governor, which, of course, he will always come to term or come to realizing this prerogative by due consultation, putting into place or into consideration various parameters as to who will deliver on this core mandate. And it might also interest you to know, it is not in all cases that you might find any of these key player members of that political party. They are his chief of staff. It helped coordinate. He could have sourced it from any other place for the purpose of forming a government that he very well believe will help deliver on the mandate for our, uh, for our uh, people. That is it for this and other. And I quickly talk about uh, whether there was power sharing and whether there was an agreement to produce a Becky OP as uh, the Speaker of Benway State House of Assembly. Again, I will tell us that I am not party to it, so I can't say uh, that yo, there was one agreement and there was a renegance at one point. All right, but all right, the honorable... House of Assembly of a state is a distinct organ of government, and they have their rules, procedure, that brings about the leadership of the House. Yes, the party will naturally have a formation of, you know, what the, uh, 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 what the zoning agreement uh, looks like. In honorable state. Commissioner, if I may, if I may, uh, so we've talked about the chief of staff, the SSG, and all of that. They're also saying that uh, several other appointments, including the appointment of yourself as commissioner and several others of your colleague and special advisor, they were not consulted at all as party stakeholders, given their status as uh, members of the National Assembly. That's why they feel very unhappy. So I'm asking again, to the best of your knowledge, besides these first ones you said, Okay, is the governor's prerogative. Of course, governor can choose whoever he wants, but as a party, they expect that you come together um, because he didn't just emerge on his own. He was supported by people. They will expect one or two things from him. Is it that he's not consulting them for anything of all these appointments? Is that what is going on, according to the accusations? All right. Um, 
I've been around the political space for quite a while now to know how uh, party and government relationship function. I've also been around the space that our party were led to forming a government in uh, 2015. And I've also been around beyond that time to also know when we have trickle of our party people in uh, legislative assembly in Benue State and even at the National Assembly. Every other leadership will emerge as a result of, you know, consultations. These consultations are in layers. Some are not within the knowledge of every members of the party, and others are also within certain classes and category of membership of the party. And I do know, when the party laboriously formed government in Benue State in 2023, the governor of Haisen Yonem earlier, in compliance with constitutional provision, conveyed the first expanded stakeholder meeting in Benue State, where this issue was put on the table, and that they are going to proceed to constitute cabinet, and that people should, uh, everybody should put their heads together, and input were made in section. This consultation, I believe, were carried out as strategic layers, and recommendations were made, and we are where we are today. I listened to my brother and my chief of staff, uh, right Honorable Paul Biam, why he was saying in session today, being one of the first appointees of His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Benue State, as well as, as well as breath and seized of the several consultation and the input that several leadership made that led eventually to the composition of the Executive Council of Benue State. So, Where sorry, 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 Ms. Amale, Ms. Amale. To the Ms. so Amale. caucus of the National Assembly. Yes, please. Uh, yes, sorry, okay, maybe you were going to that point. I wanted specifics. Were these members, yes. these ones that are agitating, including the SGF, were they consulted in making some of these decisions? That's just my question. The SGF and these lawmakers yes, that are I agitating that are believed to be loyal to him. Yes, uh, of course, again, I must also let you know, I have laid the foundation that consultation are at several, uh, are several layers. There are this consultation that is personal to the governor, and the SGF, who is the chairman of the Elders Caucus in Bainway State, that is personal to them. There are others that are also between the governor and the members of the National Assembly, which is personal to them at that level because I am not, I cannot speak. There are others, again, that is personal to the governor and the leadership of APC in Bainway State. That is personal to them. And because I am not one of them, I might not also be able to speak. But I do also know as a fact that a follow-up to the expanded stakeholders meeting that was conveyed, and I was privileged to be in attendance, that meeting was convoked by the chairman of APC in Benue State. He sent a wide circular nominating several persons, starting from the person of SGF, national membership of the National Assembly, and I was in session when the first expanded uh, stakeholder meeting was convoked, and some of the members of the National Assembly were there. There is one thing to call for a meeting for the purpose of consultation and another thing to attend. For reason best known to them, some of them were not in attendance. And under six months of this administration of Governor High St. Elia in Benue State, we have had two expanded stakeholder meetings in six months. One precedes the composition of the State Working Committee and other appointments therefrom. And the second one was the one that led to the establishment of, you know, or the composition of the Benue State Caretaker Committee or Interim Committee okay. for the local government when it becomes okay. very necessary that we fill and address this gap. All these meetings were convoked by the chairman of APC, an invitation extended, very published, announced on several media platforms, inviting from the person of his S uh, SGF through the National Assembly members to my own category and order down the line. All right, all, all in right. attendance. It all right, Mr. A Amale. Choice for just, people just... to attend or not to attend. Oh, all right, Mr. Amale, let, let's uh, let, let's play you uh, just to remind you of some of the things he said yesterday before I put forward my next question uh, at that press conference. Let's take a listen. Government blueprint for Benue State. As at the moment, nobody in Benue State is aware of the direction of his administration. What he practices is personal rule, and this is replicated by the lopsided appointments he has made in the state so far, with his immediate Kunav community cornering all the positions in his government.
The implications of this undemocratic rule in Benue State, the grave consequences of Governor Alia's personal rule is that the generality of APC members who are excluded and abandoned are beginning to lose faith in the APC-led administration in Benue State. Therefore, care must be taken to safeguard APC from this tyrannical leadership of Governor Alia so as to prepare the party for the next round of elections. By Governor Alia's undemocratic attitude, activities, and posture, the fortunes of APC in Bendo State are fast declining. The governor hires fake crowd and moves around in the state capital, giving the impression that the people are with him. Whereas, you all know that party politics in Nigeria is predicated on the shoulders of leaders from the world to the state, to the, from the world to the local government to the states. Mr. Male, I'm sure you heard them, tyrannical leadership on democratic attitude. What's your response? It's, it's very unfortunate that such comment could come from a, a supposedly honorable members of the National Assembly from Bainway State and of APC stock in Bainway State. And more particularly, for my brother and friend, Senator Titus Zam, to be the one making that uh, rendition. It's appalling and uh, rather uh, disappointing that that is coming from them, I must say the least. Uh, I say so because virtually all of them on that table, all of them on that table were at one point or the other in company of His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Benue State, Reverend Dr. Hyacinth Yonemelia, at the time of electionary campaigns, from local government to local government, world to world, canvassing for vote for the, good, for the party for Mr. President, Ahmed Bola Tinubu and his vice, Chatima, through to every other, every one of them, because he was the chairman of the Presidential Campaign Council in Benway State, leading campaign that brought all of them to the National Assembly. And at that campaign, he was rolling out the agenda of Mr. President. He was rolling out his thought, his agenda for the good people of Benway State. That agenda that um, uh, Senator Zam now say that uh, His Excellency Governor Aysentelia does not have blueprint, but leading state from his head or at his own whims and caprices, and I say it's wrong and it's not correct, was very well articulated and well captured in a document, in a blueprint, which he used at the time of campaign, now advanced package in government. This is the Bible, <coughs> the Bible and the document that guide the operation of governance in Benue State. It's titled, A Strategic Development Plan for a Greater Benway. This was the document that the governor of Benway State used at the time of campaign and at the time that he became the governor. And now is the document that every one of us whom we have assembled are using to drive okay. in good governance in Benway State. This okay. document is anchored on seven pillars. It's appalling if uh, Titus Dan and the rest of them who say they are caucus of APC in National Assembly are not in tune with the blueprint all right, that Mr. Omale. The governor of Benue State is using to manage the state. It's All right, very, Mr. Omale. It's, it's appalling and disappointing to right, their uh, person. We're, we're totally out of time. I just have uh, 30 seconds to, then, uh, sorry, to wrap up, to wrap up this. this. Just, let, just, let just, me quickly say this. No, no, just, just, hang, just hang on, Mr. Omale. Okay. Okay, just say what you want to say as quickly as possible. All right. And Ten I will seconds. say this. It is also erroneous for them to gather on that table to say that Mr... His Excellency's appointment in Benue State is lopsided. That's not correct. We have 17 member commissioner in the Executive Council of Benue State. We have 23 local government in Benue State. I am from Zone C. I am from Apa local government. And us from Zone C have six, crit uh, six critical ministry in Benue State. We are not from uh, the extraction of the governor of Benue State. We are from the same party. We are from Idoma, Zone C area of Benue State. Ministry of Finance is from the Idoma Aziz. Myself, Ministry of Power and Transport. We have Ministry of Women Affairs, Ministry of Science <laughs> and Technology, Ministry of Agriculture. Mr. Male. All in Zon C. And the other right, central Male. local government in Benue State. Is that right, appointment a lopsided appointment for them to see to say this appointment is running an egocentric administration? Okay. All it's right. not correct. They should right. appreciate uh, it very fast.
that through the alienation movement in Benue State, they are privileged to find themselves at the National Assembly. They should right. be happy it, it, and be grateful to Governor High St. Oh, okay. APC, All right, Mr. Mali, that's a good place to, to just uh, conclude your thoughts uh, because we don't have uh, so much time anymore. We're totally out of time. And if we had time, uh, we would have talked about the issue of governance because they were complaining that the governor is stifling the state of funds. I, I looked up uh, the fiscal performance of the state as reported by budget, uh, and I could see that uh, the state depends on fact, percentage dependence on facts in terms of proportion. The state depends 75.8% on fact. That means without fact, the state uh, may be insolvent. But that's not a conversation we can have now. I wanted to have that conversation with you in terms of governance, but I must thank you for coming. Uh, and I did say that Titus Zam, Senator, was supposed to be here. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it. But thank you for your thoughts and insight. I will continue to monitor what's going on in your state. Thank you for coming on the program. Please do. But I will assure you that uh, in Benue State, uh, under six months, our internally generate, uh, generated revenue is considerably improved following the leadership of uh, Governor. All right, Mike th thank you. And in no distant Th time, that thank balance, you. that ratio will shift. We're praying for that. Mr. Omale Omale is the Commissioner for Power uh, and Transportation. Thank you so much for coming on the program. When we come back after this break, the issue of uh, political impasse in River State seemed not to have abated. People march on the street today in solidarity with the governor. One of those who are on the street today is going to be talking to us about why they came out to support the governor. Join us again. Welcome back. It's still Politics Today right here on Channels Television, reaching you from our global headquarters here in Lagos. And it's all about what's going on in the world of politics. So now we switch gears to what we've been on, monitoring as much as we can uh, the incidents in River State. Today we saw some young persons marching the streets as well as labor union, organized labor. Those are the visuals uh, on your screen. This is somewhere close to the government house uh, around the railway area. Uh, marching on the street ahead, I guess, to the government house. They say they are in solidarity with the governor over this. We have the organized labor youth group, National uh, Council of uh, Nigerian Youth and all of that, all coming together to show solidarity. The labor unions as well as saying they are grateful to the governor for the 100,000 naira bonus for Christmas and they also came to thank him. So those are visuals you're seeing, and that's going to form our conversation because it appears there is still more to come as far as that resolution is concerned. I'm being joined on the program uh, from uh, Port Harcourt via Zoom by the chairman of the Trade Union Congress to have this conversation, Mr. Ikechuku Onyefuru. Mr. Ikechuku, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you very much for having me and compliments uh, to everyone else. Also, I would be the uh, a journalist and uh, former spokesperson to Nigeria's Vice President, Mr. Laolo Akonde. Mr. Laolo, thank you for coming on the program, sir. Thank you, Jeff. All right, let, let's, let's start with Port Harcourt, Mr. Oyenfuru. Um, tell us the intent of today's solidarity match. Th thank you very much. And um, just to... Uh, concur with you that uh, organized labor in River State today uh, had to do a solidarity march in support of uh, our executive governor, His Excellency Sassimalari Fubara GSSRS, who actually um, set a new record uh, because uh, River State workers for the last 16 years has never had any governor who gave us Christmas bonus. The last governor who gave us Christmas bonus was over 16 years ago. And that was uh, His Excellency Sir Dr. Peter Odeli, who actually gave us 20,000 at that time. But we have a governor today who actually has demonstrated that he's a labor friendly governor and he has granted um, 100,000 um, Christmas bonus to River People. So we felt that uh, is something we uh, needed to bring to fore and, and thank him especially for that. Uh, more so, uh, considering the fact that. For the first time uh, in, in the history of River State, we have a governor who has uh, come up to begin to think about the middle class, the low income earners. And just uh, about two weeks ago, he flagged off a 20,000 housing unit uh, with end to end completion date of uh, three years, uh, targeting low income earners. And uh, it's something that has ever happened in the history of River State. 
is something that workers are happy about because he has also developed a template that will ensure that the target um, low-income earners are the ones that will actually uh, benefit from these 20,000 uh, housing units. In addition to that, we have a governor who has uh, the, 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 the mindset to work for people, uh, the, the, the mindset to look after workers because he was a career civil servant who grew from the rank and file. So he understood and understands the post of the workers. And he came on board at a point where we were all struggling in River State and he granted employment to over 10,000 Rivers people. And not just that he granted employment to over 10,000 Rivers people, he went ahead to promote River people that um, uh, their promotions were stagnated for more than eight years. His Excellency Sassimilala Afubara promoted Rivers people and paid backlog of all that they were supposed to have earned as a result of the delayed promotion. It has never happened in the history of River State. He did all that. And then he ranks um, uh, amongst the first governors in the country uh, after May 29, when federal government arbitrarily removed fair subsidy and plunged the economy into chaos. Our, our, our purchasing power devalued, inflation keeps rising and rising and rising. His Excellency Simulai Fubara ranks amongst the first governors that deployed buses free of charge. As we speak in River State, in the streets of Port Harcourt, those buses are fully operational, rendering free transport services to uh, rivers people. I don't think there is any other state in the country that uh, has such a, a program. He's doing all this, and then with a lot of, 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 of the interest of the workers that he has demonstrated, for example, he paid bursary award to river students for the past eight years, more than about eight years, now, no reverse, no single river student received any bursary award. But His Excellency, in his magnanimity, without even level coming to say, do this, on his own, on his magnanimity, he has approved and paid bursary award to reverse uh, students. And this is something we celebrate because um, what is worth doing is worth doing well. And when we see a governor that is level friendly, that is doing what he's supposed to do. And then why should we not support him? And then you look at even the sectorate where our uh, state sectorate, where our members uh, work in the public service. That place was an eyesore. For eight years, that place was neglected to the extent that civil servants come to work and sit under mango trees because uh, there are no light, the utilities not working. But His Excellency Simulaya Fubara has come now. Mr. I am a in here, sir. Was to revamp the, the federal uh, sec, the, the state sectorate where okay. our members are working, thereby providing okay. conducive working environment. Okay, uh, with all these uh, great things you've said about him, there's no way we will not want to know uh, what the perspective of the organized labor, especially the TUC, is concerning uh, his political challenge. The man you are praising and applauding and commending is undergoing some political challenge, uh, which you're aware, aware of, and the eight point resolution right now is, is dividing uh, the polity uh, for and against, uh, polarizing the system instead of resolving it as a truce. I don't know what the perspective or the position of the trade union is on this particular issue. Thank you very much. Uh, we, as, as a labor center, we remain non-partisan. We are political. We do not participate in politics, and that is our position. We are involved in this whole political Gagmaya uh, to the extent that the actions of the political gladiators is now impacting on our members. For example, the House of Assembly complex, uh, 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 we have parliamentary workers there. Uh, we have our members who belong to the union there. As we speak, they do not have any office to go to work every day. Their mental state is impacted. They wake up in the morning, they don't know where to go. And we have started a process to engage His Excellency to say, please support us to, to, to provide a, an alternative, suitable uh, uh, workspace for this category of people. So to the extent that the actions and inactions okay. of the political okay. gladiators in River State is impacting okay. us, we have now come out to say, no, we will not fold our hands okay. and allow this 
actors to continue to impact workers and expose workers to avoid them. All right, Mr. Oye, for, I, I may have to bot, I may have to butt in as quickly because I have uh, Mr. Laulu uh, Okonde standing. Mr. Laulu, I know you've been following us on this particular journey of River State even before the truce was uh, 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 was was released to the public. I, I'm thinking now that you're seeing what is going on, what do you make of it? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, um, it's a no-brainer that uh, uh, we, we have to move our political reality, uh, I mean, as we see in rivers, and generally in this country, towards more of the people interest. Now, there is a place indeed uh, for, 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 for godfathers, there is a place uh, for senior political, uh, where they call them gladiators, who have a lot of influence on the system because of their experience, of the position they have held before. But we have to move our politics towards more people interests. It's, 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 it's ridiculous when you have the, uh, the individual differences, in this case, between a godfather and a godson, uh, directly obstructing public interest, directly obstructing the Constitution, directly obstructing the electoral mandate. Yes, it is true, and everybody knows it, that uh, Governor Fubara uh, was uh, uh, supported. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Jason we Wike orchestrated his emergence. Uh, you could even say that it was completely unknown uh, in the political cycle until you know, uh, Wike brought him. But guess what? The moment the man put his hand on the Bible, or whether it's the Quran, I think in Rivers it's the Bible, and he swore to an oath, and he became the governor, the moment the people in a popular election goes out and say that this is the guy that we want as governor, that person has become, a, 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 you know, a, a, a constitutional a creature as it were. It, it, that, that, that person has become a creature of public interest. So, so, so there has to be a limit to how you play your hand as a godfather. Some of the things that is happening in River State uh, would not happen, could not have happened in a place like Lagos State, you know, in 1999 to 2007, or even up to 2015. Not because the godfather then didn't have disagreement uh, with, with the godson, it had, you know, even significant disagreement. But this thing was managed. It was managed carefully in a way that it didn't get to this point. And that's the message we are trying to send to Mr. Wiki. That, look, you have to manage this situation. You are the, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are the higher, you are the senior partner. It is getting ridiculous. And even for the president, I, I, I hope that the president is going to step back from that uh, so-called uh, 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 directive, you know, after the meeting. It is outrageous. I mean, it, it is completely outrageous to have that kind of uh, 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 resolution even brought to the public place. It is annoying to our sense as a people, as free people. You know, we are not, we are, we are, we are not slaves of, of politicians, for God's sake. We have a constitution, and this is the basis of, of the president being in office, is the basis of the governor being in, in office, is the basis of Mr. Wicke being a minister, of being a governor. That is what unites us, and that is what defines the public interest. And so it's, it, 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 it's right time that we begin to talk to ourselves seriously that if we want this country to progress, politicians must begin to act more in the direction of public interest. I'm right, not saying that you know, politicians don't have their games. No, no, no. Land on your yeah. thought. Land on your thoughts. Just 10 seconds, Mr. Conde. Land on your thoughts. Just yeah, so, so we're, 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 we're not saying that politicians don't play games everywhere. I mean, we all see what happened in the United States with President Trump and all of that. Politicians, we do their own thing every time. But we cannot have a situation where their games and their interest is now meant to, super, to, 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 to be superimposed in a very blatant way against public interest. Oh, Come on, Peter. we have to change the narrative of this country, and this is how to do it, is by pushing our politics more towards public interest, more towards the people who voted in the election. All right, gentlemen, uh, we're totally out of time. Mr. Laulua Conde, thank you so much for your perspective on this particular issue.
uh, and I know, as I said, we've been on this uh, even before the resolution was uh, approved and uh, finally released. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ike Chukunye, for unfortunately, we can't take your last thought because uh, I'm told that we're totally out of time. But I must thank you. Is the Chairman Trade Union Congress from of River State? Thank you, Mr. Onyefuru, as well as Mr. Lalo Akonde, a journalist and public affairs analyst, as well as, as well as the former spokesperson to the former Vice President. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And that's it on the program. Thank you so much for your time and company. I'm Jeffrey Uzama. God bless Nigeria.